afternoon. Welcome back to your locomotive systems training. And uh, I apologize for the lack of uh, videos. I've been out and about all over the place for the last month and a half and uh, haven't had a chance to gear up, but we're back and we're, we're doing great things. And the last time we left up, I believe we were talking about air brake components. And uh, you know, uh, it's really great that you can run a freight train and makes horsepower and pulls all the cars you want. But as much as important it is for that locomotive to start, it's even more important for that locomotive to be able to stop. And that's what air brakes is all about. So we talked about uh, not all the components, but some of the components. And now we're going to kind of put those components to, to use and just see how they actually fit in a circuit. And in, in essence, what makes it tick. All right. So this is uh, air brake circuits, main reservoir system. This is LSTV-038. And here we go. All right. Here we have the main reservoir circuit, and I, and I use the term red air. Now what we do is we color code all the different types of air, and the reason we do that is each color of each air line represents a specific function or job or duty that that line is associated with in that brake system. So, uh, but let's talk about the components first. So in the main reservoir circuit, and remember this is simple, simple. There's, there's some things in there that are, uh, that are auxiliary or ancillary to the uh, system. But I've kind of just taken all that away because I want just to the basic core systems because this is a basic uh, class. All right, first thing we do is start out with an air compressor. And of course, with any air brake system, you have to be able to compress the air, otherwise, you simply won't have an air brake system. So we start out with an air compressor. They can be uh, shaft driven right off the front of the engine. That's right off the front of the engine. Uh, they can also be uh, uh, what they call standalone or AC driven, where they'll have. It won't be shaft driven, it'll actually have an AC motor uh, located wherever they want to place it that actually turns a, a compressor uh, to pump up the air. So there's several different types of air compressor, but they all serve the same purpose, to pump air up between 130 to 140 on most railroads. I said most, not all. Because uh, I know you'll send me a note that says, wait a minute, this such and such railroad runs 120, 130. I'm fine with that. That's why I said most railroads. Okay. So we have an air compressor. Then we have a number one main reservoir. And if you look down here, I'm going to kind of step out of the shop for a second. It says main reservoir function. Number one is to store air. Number two, we're going to cool the air. And number three, we want to remove water, dirt, and oil with a question mark. Huh. We'll talk about that here a little bit more as we go through some of these components. So once again, main, uh, we have an air compressor of whichever type the locomotive is equipped with. And we take that air we, from ambient air, you'll see in a moment, we draw it down, we compress it. And then we feed number one main reservoir. And by the way, number one and number two main reservoir has a little thing here called the DV. Those are called drain valves. That's just a, uh, an acronym for drain valves. Because if we look down here at our main reservoir function, you know, we want to keep the air at a specific amount. We want to cool the air. Because remember, anytime you compress air, it gets very, very hot, which we'll see in just a minute. And also, as a result of pressurizing the air, there's always humidity in the air, no matter where you are, some more in, in uh, certain places than in others, but you're still going to have air and water in the, in the air brake system. Our goal is to maintain the air, retain the air but our, for the air brake system, but our goal is to remove any water, dirt, and or oil. Wait a minute, how would I get oil in an air brake system? Well, the only component I've talked about so far is the air compressor. The only place I'm going to get oil in the main reservoir circuit or any other sub circuit is from the air compressor. So if you have oil in the air, you now automatically know where it's coming from. Okay. There are three main. There are three main uh, enemies of the of the uh, air brake system. One is water. Naturally, water is bad. Dirt is an abrasive and it can actually mess up the valves and oil from that air compressor we just talked about. So we want to make sure that we get rid of all these elements. So we have nice, clean, dry, sufficient air to run our air brake equipment located way over there. All right, air compressor, number one main reservoir. Down here shows the function of what that main reservoir does. What we're gonna, so I'm going to show you in a minute, but we're going to put some arrows up here. I have a J1 safety valve, and that's designed to protect this system from excess system pressure. That doesn't mean that it removes it. It just removes excess. For example, if this system runs 130 to 140, cut in at 130, cut out at 140. If there was a malfunction with the, with the cut in, cut out switch or governor, if you will, of the air compressor and it pump, 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 
past that limit of 150, then that safety valve would relieve that excess pressure and not do damage to the air compressor, main reservoir, or any other component in our system. So we now know that's what the function, and remember, from the last video that we'd seen, we had talked about the J1 safety valve. Remember, it's also used as a landmark to locate number one main reservoir. And look, there's a J1 safety valve, but in close proximity is the number one main reservoir. As I mentioned earlier, each main reservoir has a drain valve. There's different types of drain valves, an automatic drain valve, there's a manual drain valve, there's what they call a spitter type drain valve. They're all designed to remove moisture, dirt, and oil from these main reservoir tanks. All right, now we also uh, have a, on the number two main reservoir, we have a one way check valve, as you can see right here. What that means is, that, as you'll see here in just a moment, the air is allowed to draw in or go in. But in the event something happened back in here in this area, that valve would slam shut and retain that main reservoir, that air that was in that number two main reservoir tank. We'll talk about that here in more in a minute. We also have a different type, type of check valve in the main reservoir circuit. It says one-way check valve with a quarter-inch orifice. Okay, you'll notice that I have an up arrow, and in parentheses I have a down arrow. I guess I need to speak to that for a minute. Well, the locomotives that have this is designed that in the event that I have a main reservoir air leak, like in a main reservoir air hose that bursts, that an MU hose, that valve would slam shut, closed, and what it would do, it would only, instead of me having an inch and a quarter leak for main reservoir, I would now only have a quarter inch surface. With that being said, that would allow me, if I have an air compressor that has the ability that, that can pump up just like normal, then I should be able to get that locomotive maintain the air brake system, get adequate air to the air brake equipment, and get that locomotive to a repair facility that can that make that repair for whatever the problem is that caused that valve to slam shut. Okay? The up arrow, also in the event, uh, if we don't have a leak, and I have, say, two or three locomotives, what would happen is, is if, if I have three units here, one here, one here, one here, and if, and if this one was pumping 130, 140, and this one over here is 130, 140, and this is 120, 130, that check valve would open up and allow that air on all three tanks to equalize out and have nice even air pressure all the way across that main reservoir circuit. So the up arrow is to, to, to pressurize and equal these two main reservoirs with the rest of the consist. This down arrow is in the event of I have a uh, main reservoir leak, it slams shut and I don't have a severe bleed, I only have a quarter inch bleed and it should get me to the shop where I need to make repairs. Okay, so with that being said, I've got the air compressor, number one main reservoir, J1 safety valve, number two main reservoir, a one-way check valve, and I'm going to I'm gonna apologize, I'm going to step into the shot for a minute, and way over here, I have my air brake equipment. Now, just so everybody knows, and I think I mentioned this in previous videos, the number two main reservoir on most units, don't call me, I already know what you're going to say, well, I got this one or that one, or this electronic one or that one, runs off of a different circuit. That may be, but most, and I use the term most, most locomo modern day freight train locomotives will run the air brake from number two main reservoir and use it exclusively for the air brake equipment. I said most locomotives. Now, you'll see it here, I hopefully we can see it here. It says here, I got a little note, all main reservoirs have holes drilled into them called telltale holes. There's a hole drilled in, it's a 3 16th di diameter hole that's drilled in a specific amount. In fact, the formula is in the FRA rule book and they're drilled every 12 inches, both longitudinally or lengthwise of that tank, and also radially or circumferentially, which means around it. In the event I have a rust through in any one of those telltale holes, that main reservoir is history. It's out of there. You can't weld it. You can't put a self-tapping screw in there and let it go and be good. No, that tank must be removed from service. It's bad, okay? All right, so we have the players, air compressor, one, Number one main reservoir two, J1 safety valve three, one way check valve orifice is four, number two main reservoir five, and the airbrake equipment is six. Six total, so. And by the way, we want, I'm gonna just show you what these components look like in order so you understand how these will tie into what the circuit we just showed you. All right, this here is a small air compressor. It's shaft driven. It's a three cylinder air compressor. I have a low pressure cylinder on this side, one you can't see on this side, and then the center one is a high pressure, smaller diameter. So the larger diameter cylinders are low, low pressure, and the smaller diameter cylinder in the middle is high pressure. That's an air compressor. 
All right, now, <clears throat> there we go, we'll stop right there. Um, this is the number one main reservoir tank, and you can see by looking at it, here's my running board, you'll notice that the tank sits at a slightly downward angle. Why is that? Hmm. Well, water and oil, if it's got it, unfortunately, has a tendency to run downhill. That's why these tanks have a slight slanted angle going down. And down at the very bottom of it, you may be able to see it, maybe not, there is a drain valve there. And that drain valve is already designed to drain water or moisture, same difference, water, oil, if it's equipped, if, it, if i got a bad air compressor, and dirt. And as you can see here, by looking at this locomotive right here, I literally have a trail of dirt that is literally exhausting out of that automatic drain valve. So just by looking at this picture, good looking locomotive, I got all the telltale holes in there, but we've got a, a dirt ingestion problem as you can see by the dirty air that gets blown out every time this, this uh, automatic drain valve either works through the air compressor cut in, cut out, or is a spitter type, or manual drain, or whichever one we have, you can see there is a problem here with dirt inside the air brake system. And remember, dirt and moisture are the two biggest killers of an air brake system, okay? All right, so let's go to the next one. This here is our J1 safety valve. Most of them are located underneath the running board, okay? Remember what I said in, in that last video about a month ago, that when you look, when you find this J1 safety valve, wherever that pipe goes to, and whatever main reservoir goes to first, that will be number one main reservoir. We use it as a landmark. Remember, this guy is designed to pop off at 150 PSI. Now, to add to that, on a lot of EVO or GE locomotives, there is one that looks identical to that, although it's not. Physical shape, it's identical. Now, that one is located on top of the high discharge uh, of, the, of the air compressor on an EVO or GE EVO locomotive. The purpose of that one is set at 175 PSI to relieve any air, because what will happen is the air gets pumped up, and if you're in cold country, and I just came back from cold country, that air will go down. If there's moisture laden in that pipe, that water will have a tendency to run downhill, and it'll, it'll, it'll literally build an area far enough away that where that water can actually freeze and become a plug. And remember, that air compressor is pumping, and it hits that blo block of ice solid. That air's got to go somewhere, so it will relieve off the top of that air compressor, just like this one would relieve if I exceeded 150 down below here. Cool? So now we know what the 150 pop does. It's, it saves the system from excess pressure, and the 175 on the EVO units is designed to, to relieve excess pressure in the event I have ice downstream in that main reservoir uh, pressure discharge pipe. All right, let's move on. All right, number two main reservoir. All right. This here is a number two main reservoir check valve. They're required to be on number two main reservoirs. Why? Well, we mentioned earlier, number two main reservoir on most locomotives is the air that we use strictly for air brakes. Okay? We want that air to be clean, dry, and ample supply of air. Now, in the event downstream, remember the main reservoir air is coming in just like this, going into that tank, pushing that check valve open, and the air is flowing into that tank, and at the other end it goes out of that main reservoir, and it goes to the air brake equipment. If I have something downstream of this flange right here happen, and I have a loss of main reservoir pressure, this valve will slam shut, retaining that 130, 140 of air. Now, we're going to talk about that for a minute. This tank is designed to be of a specific size that allows the operator or the engineer to make two full service brake applications with the locomotive in freight, or freight position or what they call direct release to make two full service brake applications without having to go back and recharge the brake pipe. So we want to make sure that there's no water in it, no dirt, no oil. We want this tank to be full of air and nothing else. All right. So again, this Remy Reservoir check valve his design is on watch all the time, and he allows the air to flow in this way, but he, he stops it dead cold if the air tries to go back because I have a loss of pressure from here backwards. Cool? Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, this here just shows you a different angle of the main reservoir. You'll see that it's clearly dropped down at an angle. And if you look real careful, right here you'll see one and you'll see two telltale holes. And again, we use those to looking for any kind of a rust out or rust through. If we see any air or water or oil, anything coming out of these, that tank is automatically history. Okay? All right, that was number one main reservoir. All right, here we go. 
Let's go to the next one. Oh, and finally, this here is our air brake equipment. Okay, or what I would call the air brake compartment. Okay, when we drop the air door down, I have a bunch of different components. 20th control valve, A1 charging cutoff pilot valve, P2A, J relay valve, as well as a little other equipment that we have located in here. Different tanks, pressure switches, magnet valves, that type of thing. All right, so that's the air that from, comes from the number two reservoir to feed all this equipment, both underneath the cab floor, which is this air compartment, as well as the air brake equipment above up in the cab, as well as all the air brake equipment that runs down both sides of that locomotive. Quite an extensive system, but we're gonna simplify it big time. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back now. Oh, go way back. Keep going way back, and we're gonna stop right at the circuit, right there. All right, so I'm gonna step out of the picture a little bit because we're gonna start right here. Now it says red air, but I'm gonna kinda go against that. All right, so again, remember, we started out in the air compressor, Let's say it's a 70 degree day, beautiful day. We're down by San Francisco at sea level. Beautiful, 14.7 PSI at sea level. We draw the air into the air compressor. That's why I got a blue arrow, ambient air. We draw the air in on the low compressor side. We hit the button again. Oh look, and I'm gonna step way out of the shot here for a second. Now the air has increased in temperature from about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, way up to about 350 degrees. It's so hot, that pipe, that discharge, high pressure discharge pipe is wrapped, and you can literally bake a cake on that pipe, it's so hot. And for the, for the, for the folks that like the metric version, it's approximately 177 degrees centigrade out. So that's the air in, this is the air out, and it's now at 140 PSI. We hit the button again. Oh, wait a minute, how are we gonna cool that heated air down? Well, on some locomotives, or a lot of the old locomotives, there's about 65 feet underneath the running board, over by, I'd be on the conductor side, where the air goes back and forth, back and forth to about 65 feet of pipe. That's just not pipe just to be there. That's actually a 65 foot radiation pipe. It's a cooling pipe. So when the air comes in, we take that 350 air and we want to draw it down to where it's much, much cooler. Okay? Of course, the temperature of when it gets here is going to depend on the outside temperature. If I'm up and way up north, it's going to cool down a lot quicker than if I'm way down south. That's why I didn't put a number right here for as far as temperature. Now, on some locomotives, modern, more modern locomotives, they won't have 65 feet of radiation pipe. They'll have a smaller amount of pipe, but that pipe will be equipped with fins. And if you're familiar with those locomotives, you now know what I'm talking about. And those fins are just like the fins on a motorcycle cylinder and head, okay? It increases the surface area, which helps to dissipate the heat more. So we now know that if I have damage to my radiation pipe, it's probably the one the fins or the fins are bent, or damaged, or the fins are full of dirt, oil, and goop where the air can't draw across and, and remove that heat, that becomes a defect. Because now I've got much, much hotter air going into my main reservoir than I like. Okay? All right, so we got the, we got the air down the main reservoir, now we're going to edit the line again. And oh, by the way, all air here, let me step out for a second, all air here is used for everything except air brake equipment, horn bell, wipers, toilet, air shutters. Number one main reservoir takes care of everything. In addition, supplying number two main reservoir, as you're gonna see in just a second. We're going to hit that, and boom, the air is gonna come out of number one main reservoir and do a three-way split. It's gonna come up to that J1 safety valve, which we already talked about, and it's gonna make sure, right there, relieve excess system pressure. We want 130 to 140 in pound PSI in these tanks. Nothing less, nothing more, okay? We have to have that ample supply of air. It also tees off and goes down that orifice, which we were talking about. We already beat that up pretty good. Then it also will go through that number two main reservoir check valve. It allowed to go flow through it. But if I have a, a problem downstream of this main reservoir, as you'll see here in a minute, then that would slam shut. I would hold that air in there to allow me to stop my, to have two opp full opportunities to stop my train before I run out of air in this tank. Okay, so with that being said, I go a little bit further and boom, look at this. Now, as we're going through that one-way check valve with a quarter-inch orifice, I now am going out to my main air brake, not air brake, well it is air brake, my main reservoir air system, and it's going to go out to each end of the locomotive where it can either be MU'd or it's a single locomotive, the angle cocks will be closed, and that'd be my whole main reservoir system. If one end or both ends are open, then they go to other locomotives, they all MU them together, and I'd literally wind up with one great big main reservoir for all three units. That's why they MU them. All right, it says here, in the event of a separation of main reservoir at the MU hose, main reservoir pressure loss will be minimal. 
how much? Quarter inch instead of inch and a quarter. The air compressor should be able to supply air to the number two main reservoir and get that logo on to a repair facility that can make that repair. It's designed that way. Okay, let's go a little bit further. And by the way, just throw this in here. A number two main, a number two main reservoir one-way check valve was here, which we already talked about. That if I have a problem downstream of this, then that valve slam shuts and I retain that air to give me two full applications to stop that train. Okay. Actually, stop that locomotive. Each locomotive has that. Each car has its own method of retaining air to stop its own self. All right, go on to the next one. And I'll bet you there it is. Now we've got clean, dry, filtered air coming from number one main reservoir. If everything's working right, we don't have all that dirt like we showed you up there. That air will go from the number two main reservoir and from number two main reservoir out of pipe 30, it'll go to our air brake equipment, and our air brake equipment will now have all the air it needs, both in volume, pressure, flow, temperature, and if our air brake system is clean, then that air brake equipment will work just fine as intended. Okay, let's go a little bit more. Ah, these are the steps of how the main reservoir circuit works right here, and I'm gonna step out of the shop for just a second. Okay, step one, air is drawn into the air compressor. Low pressure equals large cylinder. High pressure is a smaller cylinder. Air goes through the radiation pipe, approximately 65 feet long, or it is of the finned type. And remember, we talked about the fins being plugged, dirty, bent, damaged. Air, number three, air flows to number one main reservoir. Number four, air goes to a three-way split. 4A is J1 safety valve. That's part of that three-way split. 4B, one-way check valve with a quarter-inch orbit. We've already talked about that. And 4C, number two main reservoir, one-way check valve. We've already talked about that. And then number five, finally, the air goes to the air brake equipment where it's consumed and used by the air brake to slow and stop our locomotive and or train down. Okay? All right. So, wow, that's quite a bit of information for just a little bitty simple circuit. So we now know it's 130, 130, 140 PSI in most locomotives. I said most, remember what I said earlier in the video. All right, so when you get done taking a look at that, our, remember our website is www. that's not a one, there's no numbers in our web, on our web address. It's www.lst-ca.com. Once again, that's www lst-ca.com. Take a look at it. Thank you for your support. And we're going to get back on track and we'll put more of these videos out for your benefit. And pretty soon we might actually get on a locomotive. Wish me luck. Thanks and have a safe day.